Last week was the magic of manganese. This week is the mystery of molybdenum, and I'm certainly having fun with these titles. But like manganese, molybdenum is an essential trace mineral in the body, and it's also a metal. People don't really think about that because certain negative metals like aluminum, iron, that occur in the diet in excess can be very damaging. So keep in mind, any metal, including molybdenum, manganese, can be bad in excess. However, molybdenum is far more important than manganese because it's harder to get from foods. It's usually deficient in the diet as it is specific to legumes, beans for the most part. And the medical literature states that deficiencies are rare. However, the job of modern medicine is to keep people barely alive and breathing as opposed to optimal health. Because of modern lifestyle factors, soil depletion, poor microbiome health, we aren't absorbing as many minerals from food and our bodies need more minerals as they're under more stress, including molybdenum. So molybdenum is stored in the liver and kidneys and you might be thinking, can I eat animal organs? Because hypothetically, if we store it there, do the animals store it there? And the answer is no, because of synergistic and antagonistic minerals, mainly copper. You're getting an incredible amount of copper with that molybdenum. I was carnivore for almost eight years, eating plenty of organs, and my molybdenum levels were incredibly low on a hair mineral analysis test. And I did a video on hair mineral analysis several months ago, if you guys wanna learn more about that. As we see, the primary food sources are those legumes, particularly beans, and the molybdenum content of organ meats, it's pretty high up there, but as I just said, not really viable. But due to lack of testing, we don't know if molybdenum is in every food. You know, pasta could be high in molybdenum. Is anyone actually testing it? And there's not money in it, usually people only test the mineral content of their product when they want to sell it. And as we did last week with manganese, I've put the foods that I wouldn't really consume in red and stuff that I would eat in blue, white beans, AKA cannellini beans, oats, brown rice, cheese. These three aren't really super high. The white beans, not something I eat every day, which is why I still tend to supplement it. And I say this about every mineral, guys. Get a hair mineral analysis, see where your levels are, follow a diet for a few months, get it retested, see what you have to supplement. And when you take it for several weeks, even just several days of molybdenum, your next hair mineral analysis test might be adequate. And you wanna be careful because you don't want to throw things out of balance. If you're unable to get a hair mineral analysis test, you can just take a molybdenum supplement maybe two, three days in a row and see how you feel. And that should be enough to do every few months. When we look at studies on molybdenum absorption, it's very effective. You know, people take supplements, almost all of it is absorbed and correspondingly excreted in the urine when an excess amount is consumed. It's pretty safe to supplement as long as the dose is low to moderate, nothing crazy. And the problem with most molybdenum supplements is they have like several hundred times what you would normally get in a day, therefore, might only be safe to take once a week. And as I said in the past, you don't wanna take that much of a mineral at once. I think it was with selenium because it's just so much stress on the liver because it has to process all of that at once, which is why on organsupplements.com, the trace mineral supplement we have has a very moderate dose of molybdenum and you can even just cut the dropper amount in half unlike a pill or capsule. So the main synergistic minerals with molybdenum are sulfur and copper. And if you guys missed my video on the mineral wheel, I don't know, maybe a year ago at this point, definitely check it out. So excess amounts of molybdenum can cause copper deficiency, which leads to anemia, bone deformities, central nervous system issues, and excess amounts of sulfur can cause a molybdenum deficiency, which results in just a ton of oxidative stress. And there's many more interactions to read about, but the thing to understand here is that even if you're fixing one mineral deficiency, hypothetically molybdenum, you have to be careful not to cause another issue because you can be like, oh, 
well, live them in is great. I fixed my deficiency. And then six months down the line, you're supplementing copper. And molybdenum, just like manganese, is vital for several essential enzymes in the body. One breaks down sulfites. Another breaks down toxic aldehydes such as alcohol. One more breaks down purine xanthine. And the final one is a mitochondrial cell antioxidant. So molybdenum's main function is breaking down certain amino acids. And after that, it's needed for fat and carbohydrate metabolism in addition to helping the liver detox. Extreme amounts of molybdenum can cause kidney failure, infertility, diarrhea, seizures, hallucinations, even brain damage. Poor bone health does occur too, but it's hard to measure. And the main thing that would pop up first is gout because of the altered purine metabolism, that enzyme interaction we spoke about. Deficiency of molybdenum causes sulfite toxicity, symptoms being tachycardia and tachypenia, which is elevated heart rate and shallow breathing, headache, nausea, vomiting, even coma, and those were actually symptoms I experienced on carnivore, particularly when I ate foods high in sulfur, especially eggs. That was, you know, after several years. So it does take a long time to manifest a deficiency. And if you are carnivore, you definitely want to be mindful of your hair mineral levels and what you should be doing to ensure that nothing goes too out of whack. So thank you guys for joining me today. As with my entire YouTube channel, I have bits and snippets of information that, you know, once you accumulate them together, you're able to really fix your health. And there is a lot to understand, but in regards to practical day-to-day -day stuff, it's incredibly simple once you understand it. So you guys can go to frank stefanocom to check out all of my businesses. We have the trace mineral thing on organsupplements.com. I'm wearing my Wi-Fi shielding shirt as always. Check it out, guys. Lots of interesting stuff on frank stefanocom If you guys can please also drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, as I said, check out frank stefanocom Thank you.